Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Keys, back with another brand new video. And today's video, I'll be talking about the fifth Chucky movie, Seed of Chucky. That's right, Chucky is a daddy. What does kid like? You know, how are him and Tiffany dealing with being parents? We're going to find that all out today. So with all that said and done, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right into it. Alright, so Seed of Chucky was released in 2004 as the fifth Chucky movie in the Chucky film franchise, um, directed by Don Mancini, who, uh, is the writer of, like, all the Chucky movies and everything, as I've said before, Chucky is his child, you know, his, uh, Miranda office, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but, uh, yeah, um, first time in the director's chair, um, very fun movie, I'm one who enjoys it, so, uh, Chuck, uh, Seed of Chucky introduces, uh, Chucky and Tiffany's, uh, kid, Glenn, or Glinda, um, because, uh, there's figuring out who they are, and, like, what they want to be, and, um, eventually that evolves into them, like, being gender fluid, and that kind of, that's a storyline that comes into play, really, like, in the Chucky series, um, but you can kind of tell, like, Don wanted to explore that in this movie, and, you know, Hollywood being Hollywood at the time, um, we still had a long way to go before we could have any kind of representation of that in movies. But then, um, who at the beginning of the movie goes by Shitface, um, has sort of, like, been in the care of some, like, crazy dude who's a ventriloquist that found him, like, in the graveyard from the last movie, um, and tries to use him as sort of, like, as a scary prop. But Glenn's nothing like his parents, or I should say Shitface is nothing like his parents. I'm just going to call him Glenn because I, like, I feel like YouTube's going to give me a strike for cursing or something. Um, so Glenn's nothing like his parents. Glenn is very, he's very soft-spoken. He's kind. He wouldn't even hurt a fly, as he states at one point. I wouldn't even hurt a fly. Oh, there he goes. Back to his family. Oh, I envy him. Sometimes, I wonder about my own parents. Glenn wants to know where he comes from. He wants to know his roots. He, he, knows, he, he knows he's an orphan. He knows he's Japanese. Uh, of course he's Japanese because he has a birthmark that says Made in Japan. Makes perfect sense, you know. Um, eventually, he comes to like learn about Chuck and Tiffany from some like entertainment tonight uh, video, you know, he escapes from, uh, Sykes, the crazy ventriloquist guy, um, and, you know, I was always thought about this when watching the movie, like, like, I wish we could have seen, like, scenes of him, like, getting on the plane and stuff, because it's just, like, we see him, like, jump on the truck, and then, like, and then we see the map of, like, the plane going from England to Los Angeles. How did he get on the plane? Did he just, like, jump in with somebody's luggage or something? You know? And then, like, he doesn't do, like, like what what Chuck and Tiffany do when they go to, like, doll mode, right? Where they, they stop moving, you know, when somebody comes by, so they just look like regular dolls. Glenn doesn't know anything about that, so, like, how did he... Like, how did he get off? <laughs> did he just, did he try to buy a ticket? I don't know, but it's, it's funny to think about. But he gets to, like, Hollywood, where, like, Chucky and Tiffany are. Um, the explanation for why they're in Hollywood is that these are the dolls that were used, like, in the actual murder from, like, Bride of Chucky and, like, you know, all the other Chucky movies, right? So they were taken from a crime scene, and then... Had a bunch of parts put in them, like, like electronic parts to make them like puppets and stuff. Um, they give Tiffany a complete makeover, which I have to say I've always loved the Tiffany design and Seed of Chucky more than the Bride of Chucky design. Um, you know, probably because like uh, the Bride of Chucky man, she's got the Bride of Chucky design. I'll be honest here, she's got a five head. Okay, she's got a five head. Um, so they really kind of made Tiffany more, like, smaller and everything. I think it looks, looks perfect and all. So, of course, Glenn brings Chucky and Tiffany to life. Um, 
the check-in Tiffany realized that this is their kid, you know, after Chucky makes a couple jokes about uh, Glenn's looks. Um, they both assume, you know, Chucky assumes Glenn is a boy, uh, Tiffany assumes Glenn is a girl, wants to call them Glenda. Um, of course, Chucky chooses his name Glenn. Uh, bless you! And, um, bless you again! And, um, so they kind of get, like, into an argument about that, and they come to find out that, unlike them, uh, Glenn slash Glenda isn't anatomically correct. So then they come up with a plan. Of course, Chucky and Tiffany want to get into some human bodies. So, uh, Chucky basically chooses Red Man at the beginning, and Tiffany chooses Jennifer Tilly. That's right, Jennifer Tilly is in this movie playing herself. Uh, it does an awesome job. I love it when celebrities play themselves and they go all in on the jokes. There was a recent Nicolas Cage movie that came out where he starred in with uh, Pedro Pascal, um, where he where Nicolas Cage played himself. Very fun movie. I love when celebrities do that. I love when they make when they make fun of themselves. You know, if you ever like, you know, want to feel good about yourself, make fun of yourself. You know, it's a very fun thing to do. Um, so Jennifer Tilly is great in there, you know, has a, you know, live action role. She's not just, and she's doing the voice for Tiffany too, of course, right? Um, and Tiffany is completely obsessed with Jennifer. So she was like, okay, that's, I'm going to possess Jennifer. She tells Chucky, you can possess Red Man. And they plan on impregnating Jennifer Tilly um, with uh, Chucky juice using a turkey baster. Um... So she can have a kid, and you know, whatever the kid is, you know, boy or girl, Glenn slash Glenn, Glenda can uh, possess that child. Um, so foolproof plan, foolproof plan, I gotta say. So yeah, so the, basically most of the movie takes place in like Jennifer Tilly's house. There's a couple of scenes, there's a couple of murders on like the set. Oh, they're filming like Jennifer Tilly in the movie is starring. In a movie called Chucky e. Goes Psycho, which is based on like uh, the murders that happened in the uh, the Chucky e. universe, I guess you could say. And um, some murders happened on set, and then uh, that's about it. There's one other thing where they like they go Chucky takes Glenn to like a paparazzi and uh, murders the paparazzi guy, um, played by John Waters. And, um, but really, I feel like, I think they could use Hollywood, like, a little more, a little bit more fun, just seeing Chucky, like, uh, stalking different celebrities, or see where he, uh, drives Bernie Spears' uh, he runs Bernie Spears' car off the road, um, and everything, and, uh, which I think, I think when that came out, that kind of get, that kind of got them in trouble, and they had to state that it wasn't, you know, Britney Spears didn't actually cameo in the movie, and it was like, uh, um, it was a lookalike. I think that was, I think that was the thing that happened, if I'm rem remembering correctly. Um, but anyways, uh, of course, Glenn doesn't want Chucky or Tiffany to kill anymore. That doesn't really work out for Chucky, no. Excuse me? Why do you kill? Well, um, it's a hobby, really. It helps us relax. Am I going to be a killer? Of course. It's been a family tradition for generations. So, like, Tiff Tiffany tries to keep her promise. Doesn't really work out for her. You know, killing is just ingrained in, like, Chucky and Tiffany's DNA. And it's really causes an argument between the, all three of them. Um... So, uh, through the power of voodoo, um, uh, Jennifer Tilly's pregnancy is accelerated to, um, a very fast rate, so to say, like, basically one morning, she's not, one day she's not pregnant, the next day, she's pregnant, fully, like, nine months pregnant, um, so, of course, uh, they, uh, she, they uh, finally reveal themselves to Jennifer, um, tie her up. Uh, t 
Tiffany, who has killed Redman, has to find a replacement. So they bring in uh, Jennifer's uh, driver, who she sort of has like a like a relationship with, you know. Um, and uh, Chucky's gonna take over his body, and uh, Jennifer gives birth to twins. So then they kind of re realize that like you know maybe Glenn can like split their soul. It's not it's not really explained this one, but where uh, where. Uh, Tiffany says, oh, you know, Glenn slash Glenda doesn't have to choose. Um, they don't have to choose. And I think that's the first instance of maybe where the whole split soul thing was coming in. Maybe Don, that was something that was going on in Don's mind at the time. I don't know, can't say for sure. Um, but it's always like, from what we've seen in the series, um, Glenn slash Glenda did split their soul. You know, so you had Glenn and Glenda. And, um... And at this point, um, Chucky kind of realizes that, like, F it, you know? I love being a killer doll. Like, nobody ever expects me of anything. Um, you don't get old. Uh, you know, you know, just being a doll is, like, way better than being a human. Like, what, what is he going to do when he's human? When he gets old, he's going to have to, like, transfer his soul into something else again so he doesn't die. And, um. I think that's all Chucky's whole thing is that he just he has to defeat death any way he can. Um, so he decides, you know, no, nah, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. And uh, Tiffany decides to leave him and uh, take the kid, and they get into like a huge fight and everything. And um, Glenn finally stands up for themselves and basically murders Chucky, doing the one thing that Chucky's always wanted them to do. Is kill somebody and like the whole scene where, where Glenn kills Chucky is like Chucky's like getting cut in half and he's like he's telling Glenn how proud of how proud he is of him. It's very it's very weird but kind of like um touching scene in a way. It's kind of crazy. Um, so uh, we learn in the end that Tiffany has. Um, possessed Jennifer Tilly, and that uh, at the time when the movie came out, it, we kind—I think it was safe to assume that um, Glenn had just possessed the baby boy. Of course, later we find out that um, they, they, Glenn split their souls into Glenn and Glenda, and we find that out in the series because they eventually, in the series, they do go back into the doll. And I start going by the name Gigi. Um, but yeah, this was a, a very fun movie. I enjoyed it very much. Um, a lot of people are on the fence about it. And I think the reason why is because, um, one, it was Don Mancini's first time directing. And you can definitely tell that. You can you can definitely tell in some areas where it's somebody's first time directing. Um, I feel like he did a lot better with Curse and Cult, you know. And then, like, I think the other reason why a lot of people are kind of put off by it is just that it leans too much into the comedy side of things. Um, as I said with my Bright Up Chucky video, um, that movie really, like, that movie was one of the movies that really started leaning more into the comedy aspect of Chucky. But it kept a great balance with the horror this movie doesn't really have a... It has some aspects of horror in it, but it's really more of a comedy movie, you know, if we're going to be honest here. Um, and I feel like Chucky works great when it's a balance of both. Um, but yeah, that's going to be my review. I'm going to give this movie like a... Mm, it's a movie I really enjoy, but, you know, it does have some things to work on, so I'm going to give it like a... I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Alright. So anyway guys, if you enjoyed this review, you know, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Drop a like. You know, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Love you guys. Have a good day.